everyone, it's Father Hayes. We are continuing our series of videos on the Mass, and we've been entering into a discussion of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, but first by talking about some of these themes that are weaving together in this tapestry that is the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And a lot of this we're drawing from the Old Testament. And I also recommend it in the last video, Dr. Bergsman's book, Bible Basics for Catholics, which would be a good resource to use in conjunction with these videos. So we talked in the last video about the theme of covenant. And with a covenant, covenant is a legal way of making someone your family. So we talked about common examples of covenant would be marriage and adoption. And then if you're having a, entering into a covenant with a very large group, you would have a mediator that would step forward and be the representative for that group to enter into the covenant. And then finally we said that all the covenants take place on mountains. So those are some key elements to look at. So what I want to start doing in this video, and then we'll, we'll continue in the following video, is to begin to work through in a little bit of detail, not a ton of detail, but just enough to kind of give you a context. And again, I encourage you to, to use this with Dr. Bergsman's book. I think it'll be a good resource for what we're trying to do right now. Um, to go into some of these early covenants in the Old Testament so that we can begin to see how they all come together in the perfect and eternal covenant, the new and eternal covenant of the Eucharist, which we celebrate at every Mass. So the first covenant is the covenant that God forms with Adam. So a couple key points with Adam. The first one is Eden itself. We hear in little details in Scripture, we hear that Eden is on a mountain because the rivers flow from Eden. So a river's gonna flow down a mountain. So Eden is a mountain. Eden is also the first temple. Or another way to think about it is the tabernacle in the desert and then the temple in Jerusalem are built uh, to represent Eden. There's a, a theme that is used in that um, that this new temple will be a representation of the original creation of Eden. So Adam, we hear, is made in the image and likeness of God. So that phrase, image and likeness of God, is really, uh, within scripture, is a filial description or a sonship description. In other words, Adam is a son of God. Okay? Now, we can say, well, if it's just Adam, how is he a mediator for humanity? Well, theologically, we understand that the entire human race, think about this, all the billions and trillions of people that God will create before the end of time are contained within the person of Adam. And we see a parallel with that because all the people that God will create will be gathered back into the new Adam, the mystical body of Christ. So. All of humanity is present in Adam. And in a very particular way, we see Eve coming from the side of Adam, right? And Adam gives this great cry of rejoicing when he sees Eve, that she is bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. That there is a, a, a connection there that is very strong. So we have those images. The other thing is um, Adam, is given the task to serve and guard creation, serve and guard the garden. And this is actually priestly imagery that will later be used. The, the priests of the tabernacle and the priests of the temple, they were charged with serving and guarding. All right, so we see Adam here is also a priest. So Eden is on a mountain, and Adam is representative of all of humanity because all of humanity mysteriously, theologically, is contained within him. And he is a son of God. God has created him in his, in his image in order for him to be entering into not simply a service relationship, but a sonship relationship. So those are some of the key points with the, the covenant with Adam. So then we know that sin and the fall takes place, and so God needs to reestablish uh, the covenant, and he needs to cleanse the earth. And so we have the great story of the flood. And what emerges from that is a remnant of Noah and his family. So in that sense, Noah is um, seen as a new Adam, or a second father for humanity. 
And the ark, because he gathers all of the animals into the ark, we can see the ark as a floating Eden. And then the ark, when it makes landfall, it makes landfall on Mount Eret. So Noah, immediately after making landfall, offers sacrifice to God and enters into a new covenant. So we still have all those covenant uh, criteria in place. Uh, relationship, he, Noah is, is the mediator on behalf of his family. He makes landfall on a mountain. He enters into covenant with God through sacrifice in order to establish that, that filial relationship with them. Then we move forward to the story of Abram, who will later become Abraham. Abram is called from God out of Ur of the Chaldees, which is modern day Iraq. And God promises Abraham in this covenant three things, that Abraham will be the head of a great nation, that he will have a great name, and that he will be a blessing to everyone. Now in the story of Abram, who becomes Abraham, the covenant is kind of played out in stages, and Dr. Bergsman goes into much better detail than I'm going to be able to in this video. But there's a couple key events that we want to point to. The first is what we call the sacrifice of the animals. And in that, if you recall, uh, God has Abraham cut several animals in half, and then in a vision, God walks between those animals. And what the ancient reader would see is that this is a covenant-making ritual. And in part, it's God saying, if I break this covenant, let me be like these animals. Let me be cut in half, okay? The second key event in the story of Abraham, which we'll probably talk about a little bit more detail in a later video, is the testing of Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac, his son. Uh, and even though Abraham has already had a child with uh, the slave girl, um, his firstborn son is Isaac. And that's an important detail because Isaac is prefiguring God's firstborn son, Jesus. And that the sacrifice that Abraham would have done for offering Isaac up to God uh, takes place on a mountain, Mount Moriah. Okay, so we see in this a prefigurement of Christ and his passion in several different ways. Um, but the key thing is that God is entering into covenant with Abraham in stages. And so that continuation of the theme of covenant will point us to the perfect covenant that Jesus brings about. So we will continue to talk about this in our next video and finish up with um, Moses and David and then ultimately how all of this comes together in the sacrifice and the covenant of Christ. God be with you.